for more now, we are joined by CBS News military analyst Mike Lyons. Mike, thanks for being with us. Morning, Help us understand exactly what happens now that this no-fly zone has been enacted. How does this work? Well, first of all, there's going to have to be some command and control structure put in place right away. It doesn't look like NATO is going to be able to do that because we'll have to get approval from NATO countries for that to happen. So I think you'll see the U.S., the Brits, and the France get together and figure out very quickly the command and control structure, who's going to be responsible for the targeting, and then who's going to be responsible for the weapon systems. Essentially, who's going to take the lead. But once this happens, if there's retaliatory action needed by NATO and NATO forces, yeah. Will the U.S. be at war? Uh, they will be at war, sure. We'll be firing our cruise missiles and firing our weapons upon a, another sovereign nation. This no-fly zone is not necessarily just for, against aircraft. It's, a, it's by all means necessary to repel these forces. So should this uh, Libyan army decide to attack these rebels as they come north there, and if we decided to fire a cruise missile on them in the open and attack them, that would be considered an act of war. The president would have to go down the War Powers Act and all those things necessary for us to be at war with Libya. So that being the case, how critical are the next, what, 12 to 24 hours? Next 12 to 24 are going to really determine what's going to happen there. Uh, whether or not this, uh, whether or not General Gaddafi decides to move his forces forward and, and have a full out, you know, battle with the rebels, whether or not we can get the no-fly zone in place. I mean, we do have uh, the, the, the fleet offshore in the Mediterranean. You know, the question is whether or not this game of chicken, who's going to pull the, tr who's going to pull the trigger? Because if we, if you, we see him moving forces, are we going to then fire that cruise missile and fire that first shot that'll really send this country to war again? Well, Gaddafi says, you know, the, the hour is now. The time is to take out the, re the rebel forces. That's what he has vowed to do. Do. So you're right, this is a game of chicken. But at the same time, were you a little surprised that when the U.S. went into this U.N. resolution discussion and when they went to vote, there was a little bit of an about face because they decided to do more than just a no-fly zone? You know, Betty, we changed our policy in the last 24 hours in the United States, and you saw, you know, the Arab nations have supported it. You saw the Russians stand on the sidelines and not not support it, which means that they, they do support it. They want to see the action happen. So there's so many things going to take place in the next 12 to 24 hours that will determine what happens there. Okay, but this allows them broad military powers. Mm -hmm. uh, does that mean, what does that mean essentially when it comes to the tactics? From, from, a, from a military perspective, the, the, the city that they're defending there, they have the Mediterranean Ocean to their back. So from the military side, it's going to be a very easy fight because we'll be able to go over the horizon and attack his forces well deep into Libya. So we don't have to worry about a 360 degree battle here. So from the military side, tactically, it's going to be very easy to defend. We'll be able to defend from the sea and from the land and all forces. Everything but ground troops, right? Yeah, no, no troops on the ground. The force says no troops on the ground, but there's going to be enough power in the air that'll be able to stop that army in its tracks. How effective do you think this is going to be? I know we talked about the game of chicken, but I mean, when you think about this, does Gaddafi, if he decides to go forward, does he stand a chance? No, he doesn't. It's suicide for his army. You know, perhaps his army will turn against him now because of this action. But, uh, you know, many Libyan troops will be will be killed as they're in the open if they're trying to invade uh, that city to the north to, to, to invade Benzani. I think you'll see um, the Americans be very calculated with these kinds of decisions. They'll make sure no civilians are in the area. We'll, we'll do everything we can to make sure that, that, that there's little collateral damage uh, all, all together. So from Qaddafi's standpoint, point, is he in a race against time? Because until the U.N. gets all of its ducks in a row for all of this, he's got a little time to push into Benghazi, the, rebe the rebel stronghold. I mean, is this his time to strike? He does. It's 24 hours or not. If he doesn't do it within the next 24 to even 48 hours, then he really has lost that chance of any opportunity at all. We'll be in place. The fleet is already there in the Mediterranean, has established these targets. We've got eyes on the targets right now. Uh, at that point, he'll have to negotiate some kind of settlement, and that'll be considered a lot and then perhaps over time he'll have to step down. So say he does, and he say he takes Benghazi, the rebel stronghold, is it essentially over then? That, that it's over, and then the next question comes back to what do we do then? Do we now go for ground troops? Do we, do we support, do we attack, you know, from the Mediterranean? Do we have a D-Day type invasion into Benghazi from the Mediterranean? I mean, mm -hmm. you, you think about that kind of a possibility. Uh, we've got Marines ready to go to do that, and actually if we did, there's really still a very small Libyan military force there. Uh, it, it would be a very quick fight. Can the United States afford to go into another conflict like this? You know, we're already at war in two other places right now. Never in history have we seen this. Usually also no-fly zones take place when we control the ground. We don't do that right now. So many variables are out there. The military is trying to figure out, map, figure out exactly what are all the different courses of action. But really that last one they're worrying about and they're hoping for is that he'll back down or somebody within his government will take him down. All right. CBS military analyst Mike Lyons. Mike, we do appreciate your time. Always very good information. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Benny.